Hey everyone, Rob Greenfield here and today I'm going to show you my 100 square foot tiny house that I just built along with help from volunteers. The total cost of the project is well under $1,500. We used nearly 100% repurposed materials and the house is pretty close to zero waste, created just 30 pounds of trash to build it. So today I'm going to tell you about it. So the tiny house movement has really caught on like a wildfire over the last 10 years or so and I've seen so much positivity coming out of it. But there's one thing that really often catches me and that's the cost of a lot of these tiny houses. It's common for them to be 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars but I personally have even stood foot in a tiny house that was 150 thousand dollars which is a lot of money and ultimately is not accessible to a huge percentage of people that would watch a video like this that would want to have a tiny house. So what I wanted to do with my build and with my tiny house is to be an example of how you can have a tiny house that is really affordable, making it accessible to a much larger number of people and at the same time building it in a way that is really minimally environmentally destructive. With that being said, I do want to say that this is an exceptionally simple tiny house and I live an exceptionally simple life. So this is not for everybody, this tiny house here. Everybody has a different desire and a, would build a different thing. So it's not for everybody, but that's the point. What I want to do is show this end of the spectrum of what is possible as far as tiny houses go. So this video is primarily about the build of the tiny house. There'll be many other videos, but that's what this one is about. So let's talk about the build. Uh, to start with the pre-build, before it actually started, I had very little building experience. I cannot build 90 degree angles and straight lines. It's somewhere that I struggle a lot. And so figuring all this out was a long process and really of the whole thing one of the most often frustrating and sometimes anxious parts like how the heck do I actually do this and so that was a time-consuming part just the pre-build and researching what materials I need because I just really didn't know now I know all these things like drip edge and siding and what types of nails and screws and just there's a hundred different little things so that was a time-consuming part but ultimately the plan the whole time was that it was going to be about a community build. My skill is not building. Uh, I have other skills that I share with others and my plan always does, was to bring in the community and have them help me and bring in people who know what they're doing so that we can build something successful because I certainly couldn't have done it on my own. So with that being said, I'm going to give a little, little disclaimer. A lot of people has, have asked for the plans for this house. I'm not giving any plans, I'm not giving exact instructions because I generally don't know what I'm doing. This is the first tiny house that I've built and that does not qualify me for giving you the exact instructions. What I can do is provide the inspiration and the basic information and then you have to take it from there and decide what works for you in your climate. Here in Florida, totally different from building in Wisconsin or upstate New York or Washington or in the deserts of uh, Arizona. So again, I am not a builder. I can't give you exact plans and I didn't even have plans. My friend Matt, who's a builder, uh, when, I sh when he showed up I said, do I need plans? And he said, no, we'll go with it. So I had a really good idea, a super solid idea that I had written out and everything but not exact plans. So I'm going to list a lot of the materials, the majority of the materials, to give you a really solid idea of where the things came from and help you find repurposed items. The 2x4s and the plywood, which make up a huge portion of the build, those came from Craigslist and that was left over from a build site. So stuff that wasn't getting used, that was going to be thrown away and instead they sold it. The foundation is made from uh, cinder blocks, which were left over from a build site as well. And then the two, uh, the, the, the pallets are 10 foot 
long by 32 inch wide. And I happened to see those along the bike path. And uh, basically setting four of those side by side made the exact 10 by 10 foundation. So those were uh, heat treated and used to, to transport granite countertops. So they're super heavy duty. So they make a really, really solid foundation. The flooring is all uh, from a flooded house. The siding is all from fence panels, from fences that either weren't used or uh, were, they were getting rid of. And I was gonna do all pallet wood at first, but fence panels have way more wood with less nails, so it ended up being a lot easier. The windows were from Craigslist, the doors were from Habitat for Humanity, the roofing was leftovers from somebody's build site, um, some of the smaller stuff from online, the radiant barrier, which is the insulation basically, and the roofing nails came from eBay. So there's basically two things that are the gray line of repurpose that aren't necessarily fully repurposed, and that's the stain. I really could not find used stain. So what I did is I called paint shops to see if they had leftovers. Um, they always have leftover paint that are mixed colors. Uh, or mist colors, but stain doesn't really have the color, so I was having a hard time. But what I found was a shop that was uh, had ones they were clearing out. They gave me these stain cans of stain, which were like sixty to hundred dollar cans for three dollars a piece. So not quite repurposed, but pretty close. And then the nails and the screws and the staples. Um, I got some of those used from Habitat for Humanity and from miscellaneous places. But a lot of them came from my friend Matt, who's the builder, who had a ton of extra. So he said they were all extra. Maybe they would have gotten used on one of his builds, maybe not. So another gray area as to whether they're repurposed. But for sure, by weight, 99%, and by cost, 99% of this house is repurposed to say the least. So let me tell you about where I got the materials from. So Craigslist was my number one source. Lots of things like leftover materials from build sites on there. Habitat for Humanity Restore, which there's about five here in Orlando and they're all across the country, getting used materials there. Uh, eBay for online materials. Smaller things like the, the roofing screws or the uh, lightweight insulation called Radiant Barrier, things that could be mailed. And then there's all sorts of other online local websites. There's Facebook Marketplace and groups on Facebook. Other sites like Let Go, Offer Up, Next Door is an amazing one. Um, and there's Freegal and FreeCycle. So there's many different sites and that's just what I used in this area. I actually didn't use Freegal or FreeCycle, but those are two really great sites. Um, so there's many sites out there and those are just an example of some of them. There's yard sales. Uh, I got a lot of stuff just on the side of the road, stuff that people were throwing out on their curb. And then stuff left over at construction sites, the construction dumpsters, uh, hopping into some of those. Definitely don't stop there. Every single locality is different. In Gainesville, for example, there's something called the Repurpose Project, which is an amazing place. And there's similar things like that around the country. There's thrift shops. There are flea markets, which can be a, an amazing place. There's these discount outlets that get leftover materials from construction and industry, so looking for something like that. Garage sales, uh, the list can really go on, so do your due diligence and see what's in your area. And again, every area is going to be different. So now I'd like to talk about the actual building days. I mentioned that I really, I'm not a builder. I can't build straight lines and 90 degree angles. It's just something I really can't do. And to do this on my own would have been possible, but it would have taken over my life for a really long period of time. So what I decided to do is organize volunteer days where people could come together and help me build my tiny house. And the way that I personally live my life is I live trying to be of service to my community and others at all time. And what I've done is I've tried to create a currency of giving, of goodness, of sharing. And so because I have done that, people came together and, and, and really came together to help build this house. Now, at the same time though, 
it wasn't just altruism, people coming and just giving their time. I created something that they wanted to be a part of. It was people that were interested in building a tiny house themselves, interested in building uh, anything, interested in just community, coming together with like-minded people. And so everybody who helped really got something out of this. And so again, it wasn't just altruism, it's helping each other meet our needs, helping to do things that are fun and exciting in a way that's actually really productive. So we did two volunteer weekends. Uh, the first one was a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And the second one was a Saturday, Sunday. So total of five days, about 40 volunteers came out and together we worked about 250 hours. So 250 hours would be 14 days morning till for 24 hours a day for one person. So basically that's, if it was eight hour days, you're talking about six weeks. So I could have feasibly built this in like, let's say three months on my own, but instead we did all of this in two weeks. And, and had I tried to do it on my own, I mean, to be honest, without people who knew what they were doing, I would probably have a very dilapidated rundown. I, it would be decent, but it wouldn't be half, half of what it is. So I am so thankful for all the volunteers. Thank you all so much to everyone who came out. And that's really what I would recommend for people that are interested in building a house, tiny house. Put it out there, put it out there to your community and bring people together in community to do it together. And if you think about it, we did this in two weekends. You could feasibly, with a network of friends, build all of each other's houses in a period of a year or two by working together on your weekend. So it is truly powerful what community can do. The build process, I had a whole slew of emotions throughout it. There were moments where I was just on a total high, just so excited for this community of people to be coming together and helping me. I felt so loved and there were moments where I saw it coming up and I just thought, wow, I'm actually going to have this tiny house and just moments of total floating happiness. And then there were moments of just despair, just, you know, the yard just full of all of these materials, these pallets coming apart, these fences coming apart and having so many materials and so much to do and just feeling like, will I ever be able to finish this? Will it ever be able to end? And, and you know, there were just this, just total moments of just despair. And so these total highs and lows. So I really want to say, don't take building a tiny house lightly. It, it, it takes real dedication, real commitment. I definitely encourage you to do it if it's your dream, but go into it knowing it's probably gonna be a stressful time. So I would recommend trying to be really present, having those times where you set aside knowing that you are going to be building and doing it, and then being able to step away when you need to step away. That was the part that I had the hardest part from with was stepping away. I have this sort of OCD of wanting to finish everything that's in front of me. So for me, working on being able to step away was really important. So, you know, go after it with excitement and exuberance, but definitely be cautious and know that it's gonna be stressful, uh, probably. If it's not, you are amazing. Uh, and I also wanna say that working with repurposed materials is really fun and super rewarding, but at the same time, that added to the stress a lot for me because so much excess materials had to be brought in by for pulling things apart, uh, like the pallets and such. So you have all you have so much more going on, and the work is tripled or or quadrupled would maybe be an understatement depending how it, how it goes. The work may be five, ten times more working with repurposed materials, whether it's the time that it takes to gather it, uh, take things apart fit things together. Uh, so take that into account with repurposed materials that it drastically adds the time. But for me, I, I wouldn't have felt good doing it any other way. I can feel proud of this. If I had just went to the big box store and bought all the materials, I just wouldn't be in love with this like I am. 
So let's talk about waste. How to not trash the planet while building your tiny house. This right here is 30 pounds of trash and this is all that I created in building the tiny house. 30 pounds. That's far less than a garbage can. Now, a statistic that I read online is that the average 2,000 square foot house, which is a pretty standard size in the United States, creates 8,000 pounds of trash in the build. Or I shouldn't say the house creates it, the humans create 8,000 pounds of trash building an average house. That's many, many dumpsters full. And it's just truly absurd. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to live in a tiny house because the smaller the house, the less trash that you're going to create. So let's talk a little bit about how to build practically a zero waste tiny house. I mean, it's not zero waste, but it's pretty dang close. So I'm gonna go through some tips on how to create less trash when building the tiny house. So first of all, plan. The better planning you do, the less likely there is to be waste. Another one is be careful. A lot of waste comes from doing things really quickly and making mistakes. So minimizing your mistakes will mean less mis miscut pieces and such. Probably a good half of this 30 pounds is because of one miscut on the roof underlayment. So being careful is helpful. Um, but repurposing things. So let's say you do have a miscut. Well, that's where repurposing comes in. So all the, a lot, the two by fours, for example, the shorter pieces, the leftovers, those are gonna be used for building for uh, the compost toilet, for the shelving, for little stands, for the table. Uh, so repurposing things within the build uh, and inside the house, that's a really important one. There are a lot of people out there doing projects with repurposed materials. So with excess materials that you can't use, you can list them on websites like Craigslist and the many sites that I listed earlier uh, so that other people can use them and can come pick them up and get them. You can also donate excess materials to Habitat for Humanity. I biked over with a lot of my <clears throat> excess materials and donated it to them. Um, donating to thrift shops for certain things that could go there is another option. Um, finding people doing projects in your community, maybe talking to your friends, seeing if they need items. Of course, recycling, so like the, the bent nails and screws, that sort of small stuff that's hard to be used, that's metal that can be recycled. Uh, and then there's also putting stuff out on the curb with a free sign. And when I do that, I also put it online and say people can come and get it and it goes a lot faster. Now, make sure you don't put it out on garbage day so that it just ends up getting picked up by the garbage truck so when I put it out I made sure it was days away from that and if it was going to be garbage day and there was still stuff there I would bring it in so the garbage truck didn't actually take it and the interesting thing about this whole project is that my most down moment of the whole thing came from when I was worried about how much trash that I was going to be making. I had all this ex excess materials and I just thought, oh, I mean, I have these morals and these ethics when it comes to making trash and I'm just going to make all this trash and I just had this horrible down moment and I got through it and then I did everything that I just told you to do and the interesting thing is that the other end of it following through with my morals and ethics was the highest moments of the entire thing. Uh, a lot of times I would see the people out in the driveway picking up the stuff and I'd go out to talk to them and I just had these amazing conversations with complete strangers and this woman Kim, Kim for example, who came from Craigslist to bring stuff, uh, before she came she offered to bring me breakfast since she was getting free materials which was just amazing. She came over uh, to get materials. She was building her own little privacy room and she taught me how she even you know hammers out the nails to get them to be straight and it was just this high moment and just being able to repurpose the materials really was one of the highlights of the entire project. So I definitely would really encourage trying to find those outlets because that's a high and the dumpster it's a quick fix 
but it's kind of a low. So let me finally show you after all of that, the actual house. So just to give you a little bit of an ex explanation of sort of the, the exterior, all of this, these are those fence panels that I was talking about. This side's stained, this side's not, but fence panels are largely weatherproof. They break down over time, but these will get the job done for a while. This is trim that I made from uh, one by sixes and one by fours uh, from the leftover construction site. The roof above is uh, corrugated metal. Uh, I have drip edge along the side. That was in my friend's garage, as I said, for 15 years. Uh, and he had it sitting around for that long. Um, pallets are creating sort of the, the, the porch as of now. It's, it'll get bigger. Uh, the doors are, these are from the Habitat for Humanity. Um, the windows from Craigslist. So that just gives you a little bit of idea here of the outside, but it really is pretty simple. So let me show you the inside. So this is it. It is small, as I said, 100 square feet, but I think it's right for me. There's, there it is, it's not so large. Um, and the inside is not done yet, so in a future video I'll give you more on this once it's actually done, but I just want to show you a little bit of it because I'm sure you're probably interested. One of the most important things, or the most important thing, is the bed. Uh, this will be up on a raised uh, box that I create, which will have tons of storage underneath it. So that's the, that will be the bed for now. It pulls out like that, and it's super comfortable. Right now I sleep with all the doors, all the windows, and the door open, and I just have this uh, mosquito net. I'm gonna... Pop that back up. Tuck that back away. Okay, so the walls, as you can see, they're not done either. Uh, I'll finish those probably with pallets or wood like that. A um, couple of bookshelves. Uh, I have my pumpkins here. Lots and lots of these seminal pumpkins. And right here is probably something you don't usually see in a tiny house and it's a giant or a pretty large chest freezer. The reason this is here is because I'm doing a project where I'm going to grow and forage 100% of my food for an entire year. Even the salt I have to harvest in the ocean, the coconuts to harvest those to make my coconut uh, oil, uh, every herb, every spice, every single green, all of it. So I have a freezer for preserving food. So uh, electricity, there's no electricity in the house, per, like in the, in the build. That's why it was so easy. I have one extension cord here and this is what I'll have three plugs so that's all that I can use at a time is three plugs so I'll keep my electricity very much to a minimum I was gonna go with solar but I looked into the systems it would have cost about three thousand dollars and I'm only gonna use about two hundred fifty dollars worth of electricity a year and I won't live here that long so it didn't make sense to go with solar this time around um, and uh, for water, I have my outdoor kitchen, uh, and that's all outside. And I just uh, use the water from the house of the backyard that I'm in. So with that being said, I may as well cover that, because that's probably the most common question. Well, what about the land? Uh, how the situation works is that millions of people all across the United States have totally wasted unused backyards. So this is what I did in San Diego, and now here in Orlando I'm doing it again. Basically, in exchange for using someone's unused backyard, I'm helping them. So we're exchanging, and instead of paying rent, what I'm doing for this woman is building her a big garden, helping her get chickens. Uh, it's been her dream to homestead for the last 30 years, so I'm helping that dream come true. So doing physical labor, and then also being here and helping her in her, really her, one of her lifelong goals of homesteading. So uh, we've got bees already, honeybees, something that she's really excited about. Beneficial flowers for pollinators, having a pollinator section. 
a huge garden in the front yard, which you'll see. Um, and uh, so that's the situation. So in that way, I'm able to live rent-free, rent-free. And really, it's about always looking at situations and saying, how can we as people work together to meet our needs without involving money? Because humans, we can really meet our, each other's needs and money is just a recent advent. So I like to go back to always, how can we help each other to live in a way that's happy, healthy, and free without needing a lot of money? So uh, there is a lot of other things to cover with this tiny house, but that's where we'll keep it for this video. I hope that you learned a lot about how to build and you gain some inspiration um, and there will be more videos to come that will go through all these other questions and details that you have so thank you all for tuning in and uh, whatever your dream is whether it's a tiny house living more sustainably simply living with less money uh, a peaceful world being happy and healthy I hope to be of service to you there so I love you all and I'll see you soon